I will give you a riddle, and your job will to be to guess what it is. I'm highly desired by the market. I'm the key component of many products. I run the main forms of transportation worldwide. Do you know yet who I am? When you don't treat me properly, I can spread across water. I can flow with pure water, but we never mix together. I can float and revolve, but never dissolve. Do you know who I am? I am an oil spill. And I'm sure you heard of me. I was there when the two ships collided in the, in the Mediterranean Sea in 2010. I was four kilometers long, traveling towards the French and Italian coastlines. I was there when the deep water horizon erupted in 2010. I weighed 700,000 tons, being so large that I could cover many animals around. And it's been nine years since I was released, but I'm still present in the water, floating and revolving, but never dissolving. When oil spills are reported by the media, we hear about how they happen to pollute the environment. We most commonly hear about where the oil spill have occurred, or how much oil was released, or about the dangers to marine life. But what we hear the least about is how we actually clean them up. Just like with riddles, we don't know what we are facing when it comes to oil spills. We're not able to see the hidden part of it, the methods that are used to remove oil from the water. Since the Deepwater Horizon disaster, the cleanup methods used were only able to remove 25% of the oil. And you may wonder, why only so little? Because it is not easy to clean up oil spills. And let me explain this statement through a story. Last weekend, I was preparing dinner for my family, and I decided to use this delicious olive oil I just bought. So I heated up the pan and tried to get a few drops of the oil on it. But I accidentally spilled the olive oil all around the cooking area. The greasy liquid was slowly spreading all over the place. You can imagine the mess. And after a while, I realized, how will I clean this up? I could simply use a degreasing cleaner and get on my knees and try to rub it off. However, in a case like this, we cannot simply use a degreasing cleaner. So then, what do we do? In general, there are four methods that are, that are most frequently used to treat oil spills in the oceans. Firstly, cleanup organizations use chemical dispersants, a mixture of chemicals which is sprayed on the top of the oil spill, usually by a plane. Dispersants are able to break down oil into tiny droplets allowing it to sink deeper into the water. And this way, we're no longer able to see the oil spill on the water surface, but the oil is still there, floating and revolving, but never dissolving. This way, the marine life living below the water surface is exposed to highly toxic dispersant molecules. The study done by the University of Alabama says that corrects it, one of the most commonly used dispersants can even damage the cells within the lungs of humans and gills of marine creatures. So, if dispersants were proven to be toxic to the marine life, why do we still use them? The controversy is that if dispersants would not be used, wind and water currents could transfer the oil towards the coastal area, which represents a habitat for other organisms. Therefore, the big question is, whether we will protect the marine life below the water surface or the life in the coastal area. It can be concluded that the question whether to use dispersants or not cannot be easily answered. The second method for cleaning oil spills is by placing booms and skimmers on the, water, on the oil spill. Firstly, oil spill is bordered with booms which holds the oil spill together and then skimmers are placed in the contaminated area to collect the floating oil. And collecting spilled oil is beneficial both environmentally, as less oil needs to be drilled, and economically, as less oil needs to be purchased. 
However, oceanic conditions, such as wind, water currents, or waves, can seriously disturb skimming, as it is more difficult for skimmers to function properly under unstable conditions. Also, some types of skimmers are more efficient than others. For example, skimmer A can uptake up to 2% of seawater for every liter of oil it collects, and skimmer B can uptake up to 50% of seawater. But has other benefits skimmer A doesn't have? Again, the responsibility to decide which benefits outweigh the other lies on humans, which leads to disputes. The third method ca is called in situ burning. An oil spill is intentionally placed on fire, which rapidly reduces the volume of oil as it evaporates. For us, it's easy and relatively cheap way how to remove oil from the water. But where does the oil go once it evaporates? It enters the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide emissions. In situ burning also have other adverse environmental effects, for example, on the local animal populations. Because of oil spills, animals get covered in oil, and you can imagine what will happen to them if a flammable compound is applied. Lastly, the fourth method represents a biological approach to treating oil spills in the oceans. Bioremediation is a method which is based on using microbes whose main attribute is consuming oil as it is their main food source. Their bodies contain enzymes which produce stomach acids, much like the human body. But these acids enable them to consume and break down oil, turning it into a natural, harmless substances. Therefore, using microbes for cleaning oil spills is more environmentally friendly. But does this sound too good to be true? The aquatic environment is a chaotic place which changes its conditions every second. And because bi oil, bi oil degrading microbes can only thrive at a specific water temperature and oxygen and nutrition level, the success of bioremediation is highly uncertain. Also, microbes cannot consume all types of oil, so bioremediation is not always an option. And for this reason, scientists have developed genetically modified microbes, which are better suited for harsh oceanic conditions. But there may be ethical concerns with adding microorganisms with altered DNA to coastal areas which humans inhabit. Nevertheless, cleaning up oil spills is, more, is a more matter of ethics rather than science. When it comes to oil spills, not everything we call a solution is actually a solution. In some cases, solving one problem can actually lead to causing another one. And this is applicable to other areas of our lives as well. There will always be someone better off and someone worse off. Our technology have not yet advanced to the level at which oil spills can be treated without no side effects. There will always be a trade-off. And for this reason, we need to prioritize the development of clean energy technology. Clean energy is more sustainable as it does not release almost any pollutants and is produced from natural resources. This way, we would not have to burden ourselves with a decision who we will make better off and worse off when deciding upon an oil spill cleanup method. But let's make sure that by acquiring knowledge and wisdom about oil spills, it's the environment that is better off. <laughs>